Hi everybody, welcome back to another CYT Crypto episode. My name is Stephen Aitchison and today we'll be going over the markets. We'll be looking at a couple of news stories, chatting to you, looking at some charts as well, see what's going to go up, see what might go down. And I'll tell you the story of how I lost 0.85 Bitcoin yesterday because of liquidation bots, the little sh shits that they are. But I cannot complain at all. I knew what I was getting into. So I'm just going to change this date actually. So before we go on, if you can go down to the likes button, hit that like button just now, uh, that'll be fantastic. It does help the channel. And if you could sign up with the link down below for Bitstack. Bitstack is a new exchange coming out. It's from, from Bittrex and it's um, serving the pan-Asian community. And it should be a really big one and you can get free crypto for it as well once you sign up. You get about a um, thousand for signing up. I can't remember exactly how much you get for signing up. And you get another four thousand for um, kind of doing the KYC as well. So sign up for Bitstack. You've got another couple of weeks before that ends. Okay, and um, we will just see if we're live or not. We are. We've got a few people in. I've got a couple of people watching. So I'll just jump over to the live chat. Okay, we have Marcus Jafari is in the house. Ben Pogardi is in. Stephen King is in. And Jambi K is in. Cookie is in. Don Donny Don Matthew. Mark McGregor. Um, is in High Plains Drifter, Matthew Parks, Paul Jordan, Mitch Deiter is in as well. There's a few more people coming in as we speak. Okay, Bruce Rudling has just joined us as well. Okay, we'll start. Um, yesterday, so you know I had a, an open position uh, in BitMEX, which is always dangerous anyway because we know kind of about the liquidation bots, we know about kind of leverage trading, how bad it can be and I've had an experience before. So this will be the last time I've ever used BitMEX, ever, ever use it. So I want to show you this. This is BitMEX yesterday, this was on XRP and you'll see this on all the charts I'm going to show you. See the large spike down? That stopped a lot of people out, or oh, not stopped them out, um, but kind of liquidated them as well. They've got liquidation bots and um, you can see this very much in play here. It kind of went from 8140 all the way down to 7829, which is a 4% drop in a matter of 50 minutes. Then it went right back up again, up again. Something very dodgy, but at the same time, with all of them, if you kind of look at all the charts, look at this big spike here for Bitcoin, 3906 down to 3750. So it's up and down, again, 4% it represents. And what that does is stops a lot of people out or stops or liquidates them on the way down and on the way up as well, the shorts and the longs. So it's liquidated the longs and the shorts doing this. We can see it again on Ethereum. We'll be able to see it on all of them if we look and this is why we shouldn't be trading on BitMEX. But I knew the danger was going in, so I can't complain. See that? That is a coordinated effort. That's not something that happens naturally. So this is how you know the markets have been manipulated. Look at that kind of spike up and down. So that's caught the longs and the shorts as well. Same with Litecoin as well. If we look at Litecoin, all the major indices, Litecoin all the way up, all the way down. So it just caught a lot of people unawares yesterday. It didn't have ever happened with Cardano. I don't think it did, did it? No, it didn't happen with Cardano. Cardano was on the way up. So I was um, kind of stopped out and lost not point. No, it was liquidated actually. I said it was stopped out. Not it stopped out. It was liquidated because um, I'd put a new, a new trade on that kind of brought it up um, to 152,000. Um, buy-in. So it wasn't a stop. I had to stop previously but it kind of changed that and the liquidation price got hit. So I lost 0 0.85 Bitcoin which is a big huge bummer because that represents about 15% of my overall kind of cryptocurrency. However, when you go into a trade and this is so so important, when you go into a trade you've got to go into the trade and thinking okay I've lost all that money. But whenever you put money on a trade, you just say, I've lost all that money. Or the most you can lose is 5%. With BitMEX especially, um, should have put, I did have a stop loss on before. It was um, silly of me, but um, 
I just kind of left at the liquidation price because it was going up, it was going up, and it was going up, and thought that's fine. Uh, I'll move the stop up. I didn't um, actually put the stop and move it up, uh, and it did move up um, before kind of shooting back down. So yeah, you've got to take the emotions out of every single trade that you go into. So when I went into this trade, I thought, okay, I've lost this 0.85 Bitcoin. Uh, it's gone. It's gone already. You have to take take the emotion out. Even though it represents 15% of my overall um, kind of cryptocurrencies, there's nothing I can do. So I know I can trade trade that back again. It's just going to take a wee bit of time to get 0.85 Bitcoin traded back. Um, unless I kind of went all in and just did it that way, which I could do if I sold everything, but I don't want to sell everything. So just be careful. Be very, very careful. When I was going into XRP, I went into with a 20x um, leverage. Um, had I stayed in at 10x leverage, I would have been okay. One sec. Let's close that down. Um, had I went at 10x leverage, I'd have still been okay just now. So just be careful. But also just watch your emotions when you're going into trading as well. So, so important to kind of um, keep a check on your emotions. Right, one sec. Get this, hopefully. They're not called back. I know who it is, so I'll give them a call back. So I just wanted to warn you of that. Um, who else have we got in? We've got Gary Stewart in. Um, we have Alex Jug, Patrick Frey, Loyal Tanji, Nick Smith, Mike Pollan, Gino Dow. Is in Max H, uh, is in uh, Mervyn Skidmore and Mr. Swanfield is in as well. Um, Nick Smith is saying those spikes are something else. One wee second, folks. Right, sorry about that. Persistent. Um, those spikes, Nick Smith saying, uh, those spikes show how manipulation is in the market is. Uh, and this is why the SEC are trying to regulate it. Whew. Um, Max H. Hi, Steve. Made it live first time. Excellent. Welcome to the channel. Good to see you here. Uh, Matthew Parks, is that just on BitMEX and not across other markets? Well, we'll look. We'll have a wee look there. So XRP, BTC. So what happened? And um, this is on the daily. We'll look on the 15 minute chart. You see the big spike up, but there wasn't a big spike down. Uh, was that, we were talking there, it was 14th of March, yeah, it was 14th, sorry, I do apologize. So I see a spike up and we do see the spike down. So it wasn't, it was across the markets. And um, so it is manipulated. It is manipulated because it was across all the markets. And um, as I said, but it's not organic. There's no way it can be organic. It's impossible to be organic. That Ethereum went down, Bitcoin went down, XRP went down, um, all at the same time, all within a space of 15 minutes, kind of up and down. So um, it's bots that play, obviously, whale bots, um, I would imagine. So uh, it's been a mani manipulated effort and a coordinated effort between all of them. But who controls these bots? Uh, that's the question. Who is it that's actually um, doing these bots? So, because it can't jump down that much. There's no way it can jump down that much. All at the same time. So, um, I was livid for about one minute. Literally, I was, I was really, I was raging for about one minute when I seen it was um, all across the board. And I thought that well, I knew what I was getting into when I got into it. There's no point in um, blaming anybody else. Just get on with it. Uh, Matthew Park, if so, that's blatantly illegal. It is totally illegal. Happens on Binance at times as well. Yeah, the thing is with Binance, well, on Binance as well, we should have stops at 5%. Hopefully we'll have stops at 5%. 5 to 10% should have a stop in there. And <laughs> the thing is, when I got liquidated there, I'd kind of seen the news on Qtum as well because I'd, I'd recommended Qtum and it started going up. It went up 30%. I waited on it coming back down because I thought this is good news and they're going to get more good news coming out. And so I went into Qtum as well. Then I got stocked out. I put a stop in and I got stocked out of Qtum as well. 
thought, oh, Jesus, this just been a nightmare day um, for me. So that was um, what happened yesterday. So the 14th wasn't a good day yesterday. Um, morning, watching from a windy building site. It says, Dom, exit you up, kind of doing your building stuff. And um, this is one feels saying good morning. Steve, it's only money, says Mervyn Skidmore. Yeah, you uh, can always make more of it. Can always, I've done it once, I can do it. If you can do it once, you can do it a million times. So we'll get back up. This is what it's all about. Rob UK is in the house. Uh, welcome to you, one of our brilliant admins. Rob, thank you very much for the news stories. Really appreciate it, mate. Rob and um, James, one of our other brilliant admins, provide a lot of the stories that I kind of say in the morning as well. I uh, kind of talk about in the morning, but obviously I look for kind of the up to date ones as well. So we'll be sharing them with you. Um, Gary Stewart, it's a tough one. How do you regulate a system that's designed to be non centralised? Who regulates a decentralised system? Yeah, exactly none. Gina Dow, Ada and Digibyte doing well. Upwards trend and Tron cup and handle towards upwards trend. Yeah, we spoke about Tron yesterday. Um, Cardano is doing brilliant as well. We've been speaking about that for a while, just saying it's going to shoot up and it's starting to do it now. And um, Ben Pogardi, sorry to hear that, Steve. No problem at all. It's just, it's my own fault. It's my own fault. I totally blame um, kind of myself. I'm not blaming the markets. I'm not blaming kind of manipulators or anything. It's totally my own fault. I kind of know what I'm getting into and I shouldn't have done the leverage because uh, I'm doing well enough trading on Binance. Um, so I shouldn't be doing kind of stuff like that. It was just for quick money because I know when I know the kind of trading style. And it really was um, for quick money. You think, okay, this could be a quick um, Bitcoin for me. For putting 0.85, go 20x leverage, uh, and it kind of goes up. I can get another um, Bitcoin or two back quite quickly and start trading again on Binance. So that's kind of what happens. Uh, Mark McGregor, gutted for you, mate. I know it's. I was gutted as well, literally for it. I was livid. I was really angry for about a minute, and then I let it had to kind of let it go. Um, Tim Gash is in. Good morning to you, Bruce Rudling. What's scary is that all of us in crypto almost expect to be scammed and or manipulated and just brush off. Exactly. Exactly. Um, Dom Gateman, meet and greet. So watching in my office. Ah, right. I'm with you. Excellent. I dominated the air. Looming from Yellowstone. Mooning. Mooning. <laughs> Mooning from Yellowstone, Wyoming. Good to have you here. Uh, that's a strange kind of username. Um, Gary Stewart, good job. You had your big boy pants on here. Yes, definitely. Definitely. Okay, so we'll look at um, what's happening in the markets overall. 135 billion, gone up another billion and a half. Well, no, I'll say another billion from yesterday. Um, Bitcoin dominance has come down slightly again to 50.9%. Who's up just now? Crypto.com, MCO, uh, no, Crypto.com, CRO is up another 52%. And Lisk is up 17%. Digitex Futures is up again. And we'll have a look at some of those as well. Crypto.com itself, MCO, is up 16% as well. Qtum is up 15%. Wanchain, Verge is up um, as well. So we've got in the green, we have about 80% in the green, 20% in the red. Repo is down 10%. Electronium down 8%. Bitcoin Diamond down as well. So there's a few in the red, but but not by that much. And we'll look at the overall. So this is the overall markets for 2,110 now, cryptocurrencies. And up over 24 hours is Ormius Coin, up 910%. Jewel is up 89%. Uh, on 90,000 volume. Ormius Coin on half a million volume, which is good. Market cap at 26 million. Um, One World is up, market cap half a million, just over half a million, it's up 73%. And one sec, this phone keeps on going off, I'm not going to get it, I'm just going to leave it. Um, Capricoin is up 69%, No Coin is up 59% as well. So good to look at these, as I say, we always look at these as well, just to see what could be up and coming, and we're always looking at the market cap and the volume um, as well. So good to check out um, that. You have to check out the volume and make sure it's not kind of wash trading. A lot of these kind of smaller coins 
Um, you could see it's wash drain as well, or you could check it out and see if it is wash drain or not. Okay, so Bitcoin. We'll have a look at Bitcoin just now. This is um, XRP just now, back up to its normal levels, um, which shows it was kind of manipulated, but it's back up to its normal levels now. This is on a 15 minute. We'll just look on the daily. Now we can see here 8,000. Um, so I'm out of XRP just now. It wasn't um, kind of long term, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to sell XRP just now and trade it. I'm going to sell what I had with XRP and trade that back. Um, not revenge trading. You've got to be careful. You're not doing revenge trading. Just getting anything. Just stick to your strategies and um, do that. And so that's what I'm doing. So I'll, I've sold the kind of XRP and I'll try and trade back what I lost yesterday. Um, and hopefully in a couple of weeks' time, I'll get that 0.85 Bitcoin back um, if the markets don't take a huge downturn. So we'll see what happens. See what happens. Right, Bitcoin, where about Bitcoin? Uh, BLX, we will look at. We are 3,871. This is on the daily as well. I just want to check BTC USD. Yeah, 3,850, so it's the same kind of pattern. I just want to check BLX was up to date. Yeah, same again, 3,871, just up slightly. From it. it was still just outside this triangle there, so I don't know what this is looking for. Um, like with BTC, um, it's trading sideways at the minute, nothing much is happening. Um, so, still not got to this 4000 level, which is kind of worrying for me, but we're still above on a daily, we're still above the, the 50 EMA, um, which is good for me as well. So, but still just slightly concerning, obviously, when it went up and down um, yesterday. That was a wee bit concerning. It's not even shown there, to be honest. Okay, so that's Bitcoin. So it's really, there's directionless at the moment. It's just kind of trading sideways just now. Who is up today on Binance? We'll just have a look on Binance, see what's happening today. So we've got Aaron uh, is up another 19%. Uh, just keeps on going up from here. 3,500 is up to 12,000 just now, and it was only back in September, we had 3,500. Qtum is up, I spoke about that, 6,400, it did come back down, I got stopped out in this and I thought I'm not going to go back in, there's no point in um, trying to chase it, you let the trade come to you, uh, but I did think this was going to go back up after I seen a tweet saying there's lots more news coming out over the next couple of weeks, so once I'm stopped out, I kinda, you have to walk away from it once you're stopped out. Because the tendency is to get back in, it's kind of like revenge trading, saying, right, I'm going to get you. But you don't want to do that. So even if it does go up, you just have to let it go. Lisk is up as well. I spoke about Lisk on a number of occasions. That is up uh, another 15%. GRS is starting to go up again. Um, we spoke about that. You can see it kind of at the bottom there, around about 10,000, and then started going up. So it's up another 13% from there. MCO is starting to go up as well. And that's been a previous call from these levels, around about the kind of 60,000 level. Um, so it's up 33% from there. XVG is finally moving as well. I uh, don't know what's going to happen with that. Uh, cup and handle there. We've been speaking about this cup and handle formation as well um, for a while. We'll just have a look at XVG chart because it looks good on the daily, to be honest. XVG BTC. See, on the daily, it's just crossed over. It like crossover. Rarely does it cross over. It's crossed over a couple of times, very small times, just to jump up a few times. But the last time it really kind of made a, made a major crossover was this time last year. Um, and it crossed over to 528, went all the way up to about 2,000, then came down again. I think that's when um, John McAfee had kind of talked about it and it jumped up. So this could be another um, jump. For XVG 186, we've got resistance line of 206, another resistance of 253, and then the other resistance of 314, round about 314 level. So this could be a call. Actually, this would be a call for me. It kind of fits the criteria for a call for XVG. So 185 um, could be a good level to get in, although that represents a 4.5% jump. 
the balance would be a different kind of jump, 10% already, but you can see the cup and handle there uh, on the daily as well, kind of forming. That's much more clearer on here, but just cup and handle, a wee bit down and then back up again. So this could be a big, a big jump up, um, but I don't see any major news out about it. I know there was a kind of payment um, kind of system out, but that was a couple of weeks ago. I don't see any major news coming out. Unless you know of any major news. EGI has gone up. Um, Singularity Net has been gone up um, for a couple of days. That's done well. So 1100 up to 1600, 60% rise. But it's been going up and up since um, 26 or kind of September. It's just been going up big time. So it's went up about 200% since then. So it's done real well. Storm starting to move. It did move um, a couple of weeks ago as well, or last week, but it didn't really do much. Yeah, last week. Um, it's starting to go again, so it might be on the rise, on the move. Okay, we'll take a look at uh, the smaller ones that we've been looking at. Digitex Futures. It's not so much a small one anymore. It's number 55 on CMC. Um, gone back up to 2,225. It did dip. Um, so this is a good thing about the um, supposedly smaller ones because they, when they do dip, you can get back in and you can get a good percentage gain on them. A percentage gain there of about 50%. Um, even more if you kind of bought down here at 900, you could have um, went up 130% or something. So Digitex, we'll look at Bab. Just still following Bab just to see what they're doing. Um, still with five Satoshi, unfortunately. How do have moved up as well. They're coming out at the end of April. Um, and there's a video with Keith Waring about how to do as well and again this is another one it jumped from 100 to 210 so that's a 110 percent jump it did come back down again but still up 50 percent if you got in 100 as well still rate how do and um, still really like them metamorph i'm going to do a video on metamorph and um, because i've never done a, an update video on metamorph and it come out with um, lots of new things and there's new fundamentals kind of things uh, changed with metamorph so it's still like this for the long term, and it's only 300, 300, 400,000 uh, market capitalization, and I think it's got a lot going for it. So it's sitting at 104 just now. So kind of going sideways at the minute, and it has been for uh, the last couple of months. And uh, what's the other one? We've got BPT, block port, still like the look of that. Uh, it's sitting at 3,000. That's kind of jumped up from 1,240. Uh, I'm still in block port as well. Adbank, really liking what Adbank are doing just now. And um, they're doing amazing things at the minute. And um, sitting at 82 just now. Still think that's a really good price to get in it. But it was a couple of weeks ago sitting at 23 Satoshi. So, and it has been as high as 441. So I still think that represents a brilliant opportunity. And it's kind of surpassed as kind of um, previous resistance, which is good. That's a good sign as well. So it looks like it's going to go up some more Adbank. XTRD, haven't had a look at that in a while. Um, where are we with, with XTRD? At 30 Satoshi. It has been as low as 7 Satoshi. So, a good jump if you could have got in at 7 Satoshi again. What's the other one? Vouch for me, I've never... And I don't know if it's coming up. IPL, don't know if that'll come up here. Insure pal. It's got the old name. It's now called Vouch for Me. That's one I bought on an ICO and it just kind of <laughs> plummeted. Never really done much after that. Just wanted to see where they were. I still like the idea of this. Up 106 Satoshi. And the other one was Bit Degree. Bit Degree. Yeah, that's it. It's near its all time low as well. It's 63 Satoshi. So that's some of the kind of lower cap ones that we've had a look at now and in the past. Um, Mervyn Skidmore, if I had a dollar for every emotional trade I lost on, I'd have more dollars to lose on bad trades. <laughs> Excellent. Uh, sorry, I meant good morning. Um, I dominated the air in my chips bag. Uh, what, I'd like to hear the story of that username. Um, Mark McGregor, uh, Telepool's a sneaky update. USD is now officially not backed 100% by USD. Oh, I was meant to do the story on that yesterday. I didn't do the story on that. Tom's vibe is in. Good morning to you. Um, Urban Skidmore, Ada, will it break 1320 resistance? Hopefully. 
Hopefully this time. Rob, you okay? Steve, quick question. If we know that was manipulation and the candle was 4% of BTC both direction, what would be safe bet? What leverage maximum in that trade to be not liquidated? 10x. 10x would probably be the best one. 5 to 10x. If it's on the likes of... Can I do it just now? It won't let me do it just now. Um, I've not got my phone to log in either. So I was going to show you the different um, kind of ways to do it. But I've not got my phone with me to kind of log in with the Authenticator. I've just got a special phone that I never use. I never connect to. It's just for crypto stuff. So I've not got that um, with me at the minute. Um, so yeah, I would only use 10x. So you can use the likes of BitMEX and that. I'm not saying it's their fault. It's totally my fault. I take full responsibility for that. I just went 20x and I shouldn't have. Um, but if you're 10x on a trade... Um, with the likes of XRP, if I was 10x on that, but I wouldn't have been stopped out. I wouldn't have been liquidated. Uh, I don't think I would have been. I think I would have been sitting at 7,500 or something at 10x. Um, so yeah, that'd be that'd be a safe one. So five five x 10x would be a safe one. And for Bitcoin, obviously the same with Bitcoin as well. Five x 10x, um, you could do. Um, so we can learn in the future what's a safe leverage. Um, label, yeah, 5x, 10x for me. Um, I still don't like BitMEX because I know they do kind of a lot. There's a lot of manipulation goes on with BitMEX. So when another one comes out, a better one, then a more trustworthy one, then I think uh, we'll start using that. And Digitex Futures could be that one, and um, because everybody's just waiting on a better um, BitMEX to come out, um, there's loads of people just waiting on that just now. Uh, me for one, uh, as well. Uh, a more honest <laughs> one for sure, and when that happens, Bitmex is just going to go. It's just going to die. G Slick is in the house. Hi to you. Honest crypto journey morning. I just popped in to say hi. We're watching full later. Wife and I started the fostering process. Oh wow! End of last year and have a course over the next couple of days. All the best, guys. Excellent, Stuart. We've just done that as well. Uh, we've got somebody coming out this week or next week coming out with the fostering process as well. So. Um, we're in the same same boat. I didn't know you were doing it as well. That's brilliant. Um, Crypto Knowledge Alliance, thank you very much for the £2 donation. Really appreciate that. That's from James, one of our brilliant admins. Thank you very much for that. I really appreciate it, James. Um, fantastic as always. Shame about the XRP position, but chin up and break the emotional bond to it. Exactly. That's what I've done. And that's what I was kind of saying as well. You have to kind of learn to not do the emotional trading because it does make a huge difference when you do that. Axel is in the house. Hi to you. Um, crush the likes, folks. Yes, crush the likes. Max X, ouch, 0.85 BTC. Yeah, um, I guess that's what those wicks were for. Yep. Likes, crush, catch you later. Honest Crypto Journey, brilliant. Gary Permenta, ETN formed a cup and handle, but the handle became a spout. Uh, still waiting for some upward movement. Um, ETN has been doing really good. James Oklahoma is in the house. Good morning, all. What did I miss? Oh, you missed everything. Um, Crypto Knowledge Alliance, check out Bitmax also, margin up to 10x, but pairings like Neo and BNB also on there. Uh, I checked out Bitmax as well, because we're looking at Bitmax for buying the tokens for Bitmax. But the only thing is, it had something very similar to Coinex. Uh, Coinex.com, I remember when that first came out as well, and they had their own kind of coins um, to bring out as well, uh, very similar to that. So I don't know if it's the same people or there's something that made me stop about it. I'm not saying there's anything fishy. I'm just saying it's exactly the same setup with Coinex and um, to get your coins and to kind of mine them and stuff like that as well. Uh, just like the Pundi X chart, we'll have a wee look at that. Have you looked at XRM yet? Nope, I haven't done that. Adam Forrest, good morning to you as well. So we'll look at, we haven't done this in a while. It's never really changed much to be honest, Pundi X. It's still at 16, 17 Satoshi, never really changed, nothing really much happening with it. Obviously, once they kind of do the conversion over to FX, then hopefully they'll stabilize from there unless they do another conversion to another coin um, or something. But they've just never done much. They just, even though they're making money, they're selling the machines. Um, I couldn't really understand it, but there's a lot of apathy with regards to Pundix. But when it comes back, when the when that apathy kind of disappears and people start getting back into it, it will, it will go up, uh, I'm sure. Um, XLM, obviously that's doing big things just now. Stellar Lumens, we'll have a look at this and then we'll jump um, into the news. Stellar Lumens is bouncing off the 7 EMA just now on the daily. You can see that quite clearly there. 
bouncing off, coming down, bouncing off, coming down, bouncing off. So it looks as if it's going to do that again. So this looks like a good opportunity to kind of get at these levels or wait and it coming down, maybe another 100 Satoshi or something, then get back in again for Stellar Lumens. But on the daily chart, on TA wise, it looks good um, for me. At least, let's just have a look at the levels. Bouncing off the 0 0.382 level, which is a 7 EMA, it coincides with that. So it could come down to 0 0.5 or 0 0.618 level 2474. So I put a stop loss maybe at round about 2440 or something like that. If you're going to go in it for the long term, that's what I'll do. Okay, some of the news. CBOE exchange puts brakes on Bitcoin futures listing. This, a lot of people are saying, oh, this is a bad thing. This is bad news for BTC, but it might not be. This actually might be good, and I'll, I'll kind of share with you why in a second. CBOE futures exchange, CFE, is putting its Bitcoin futures market on hold. The unit of CBO Global Market said Thursday that it would not add a new Bitcoin futures market for March, citing a new need to review how it approaches the space. CFE is not adding a CBO E Bitcoin USD XBT futures contract for trading in March 2019. The futures ex, um, futures exchange said in a notice to traders Thursday afternoon, adding CFE is assessing its approach with respect to how it plans to continue to offer digital asset derivatives for trading. While it considers its next step, CFE does not currently intend to list additional XBT futures contracts for trading. However. CBOE said currently listed um, Bitcoin futures contract will remain available for trading. That means the last contracts listed, XBTM19, will expire in June. Um, I'm just going to see. There's some more news there. CBO, along with the rival um, Chicago Futures Exchange, CME Group, made a big splash in late 2017, blah, blah, blah. And there was another kind of story on that as well. Have we got that there? No, I haven't. So this could actually be a, a good thing um, for Bitcoin as well. A lot of people are saying, oh, this is bad. This is not um, not good. But this could actually be a good um, thing for uh, as well because a lot of people, it's, it's not going to be able to be, well, it's just a futures as well. It's not um, backed by anything. Um, it's just kind of traded and it's just backed by kind of USD. So it's not um, backed by um, Bitcoin or anything. So it doesn't really affect the markets. But... Um, I think this could be a good thing as well and traders might want to get into kind of Bitcoin, the actual Bitcoin and trade um, Bitcoin, but they're going to be using other exchanges as well, I would imagine, for that. So it might be a good thing in the long run um, and see what happens when they do because they'll probably come back out again. It's obviously probably making too much money for them, I would imagine. One coin, this was a story that um, kind of Robert sent me as well. One coin, the 3.7 billion Ponzi scheme that keeps on going. Um, one of the top leaders of billion dollar Ponzi scheme, One Coin, has been arrested um, in Los Angeles. But this weekend, there's a meetup for new potential investors for One Coin in Stockholm in Sweden. Uh, I don't understand this. The US Attorney's Office of the uh, Southern District of New York released a press release that one of the leaders of the known Ponzi scheme, One Coin, has recently been arrested at Los Angeles International Airport. But this weekend in Uplands at Vasbay, northwest of Stockholm, there's a planned meetup still taking place for the global Ponzi scheme. So it's got a calendar of full events. They know about it, but they can't seem to shut it down. It's still going just now. So it's kind of weird um, that this is kind of taking place. They've got events in Dubai, events in Thailand, in Colombo, Stockholm, uh, and another one in Thailand as well. So, as alleged, these defendants created a multi-billion dollar cryptocurrency company based completely on lies and deceit. They promised big returns and minimal risk, but as alleged, this business was a pyramid scheme based on smoke and mirrors, more than zeros and ones. That's from the press release from the US Attorney's Office. So how have they not got the power to shut this down altogether? I don't understand that in an international way. So, just be careful of that. Obviously, we're not involved in that. Nobody's going to have been speaking about it. Brave Browser reaches 60,000 verified publishers. 60,000 verified publishers. That's totally different from people who are signing up and downloading the, the actual Brave Browser. This is verified publishers. So somebody like uh, myself. So I'm a verified publisher on Brave. I am um, just now at the Brave platform with my CYT crypto channel and with my blog um, as well. So people can start tipping me. 
Uh, Rob was saying as well that one of his mates got about $2,000 this month. I don't quite know how to do that, um, to be honest. But I've got the Brave browser. I'm downloading the new one. I've download just downloaded the new one as well. Um, but yeah, 60,000 verified publishers. So that means they've gone through the process of being verified. It um, means you have to kind of put a small file on your website um, or something like that uh, if you've got a website. So that's good news for Brave and for BAT as well. And they've just gone from strength to strength. Yeah, Bittrex suddenly cancelled its, excite, uh, its excited IEO uh, initial exchange offering just hours before scheduled launch. So initial exchange offering are popping up as new trend, blah, blah, blah. We've seen that with Binance, etc. Um, Bittrex have come out and said, trust and integrity are the most valuable assets of Bittrex International. As a result of significant last minute changes with RAID, which was going to be the IEO, we have cancelled the IEO offering of the RAID token. We apologise for the inconvenience. We'll provide a more complete statement shortly. So it seems that OP.GG terminated its strategic partnership with RAID, which was a vital part of the RAID project. So it seems as if that's why um, Bittrex were cancelling the IEO. So it was meant to go live uh, March the 15th, but they cancelled it yesterday, um, which shows us a bit of integrity about this as well. So I thought that was actually a good thing from Bittrex's point of view. So they've cancelled that um, as well um, because of this strategic alliance that they had that was no longer there with RAID. So no doubt there'll be other ones, but no doubt it'll be more trusted in the future as well. So that's a good move on Bittrex part, I have to say. Um, crypto platform DX.exchange adds secondary trading of security tokens. Um, so this is DX.exchange. This had a soft launch. We spoke about this last month as well. So they're going to offer secondary tokens um, as well. So announced today, the exchange now allows companies to list the security tokens previously issued on other platforms. Institutional investors in Europe can purchase the tokens on the exchange for fiat, Bitcoin, Ether, um, Tether and XRP. However, to start with, only one such token will be listed on DX.exchange. It's native IGWT token. So it's still kind of small and uh, small news for it and uh, not big news um, security exchange but it's coming and that's just a couple of news stories put together Binance coin to be accepted on Loom Network's gaming apps not a huge deal but Loom Network Loom a blockchain based ecosystem for developing online games and social media apps has announced that it will be supporting Binance coin as a payment method which is cool um, not a big news story, but kind of a news story that came up as well. So that's good news. Okay, we'll go back to chat. Um, what time are we on? 9.12. Max H, hello Steve. Have you come across banks? Uh, they have a banking license and an app. They're entering the final delayed ICO sale. Have you been under the radar, but could be a hidden gem. They've got a banking license. Hmm. I've never heard of banks. I don't think they'll have a full banking license, surely. Because that would make them the first official bank on the blockchain. Well, insurance, multi exchange integration, tailored banks experience. Uh, banks partners have applied for UK and EU bank licenses, so it's applied for. So most of these kind of kind of online banking, um, not online banking, but the blockchain banking, I've got an e-money license. That's totally different from a banking license. So we'll have to be careful of that as well. So banks will operate as an e-money agent, yeah. So they've got an, an e-money license, totally different from a banking license. So they've not got it yet. They've just applied for it. So the same situation is kind of bad, really. Uh, and there's a lot of these companies kind of popping up. So same situation. As Bab, they've applied for the banking licenses. It's a long drawn process, as we've seen with Bab. We've been speaking about it for a year and they've still not got a license. Um, but e-money license, um, Bab have had that for, from the beginning as well. So there's a lot of companies like that. So, yeah, thanks for letting me know about that, though. Um, have you come across banks? Gary Permenta, thanks for the heads up on Bitstack. Save 200 tokens, then 1,000 
then 400 following KYC. Yeah, you can get 200 tokens every day just for signing up. So over the next 15 days, you could get another 7,500 tokens or something. No, it's not. Over the next 15 days, you can get another 3,000 tokens for sign out, signing in every day. Um, yeah, so 200 for signing in every day, 1,000 for signing up, 4,000 following KYC, that's it. Um, can you take a look at QKC? I looked at that the other day. Um, for myself, I didn't kind of look on the channel, but I looked at it for myself and it looked good. So we're close. We're not that close to the bottom. 334, 846, so about 200% off its bottom. Um, and when it kind of crossed up here, this is what made me look at it, when it kind of cross, crossed back up over here, um, the 70 EMA didn't actually cross over, but um, the price actually crossed over and the 50 EMA went up to nearly a thousand. Didn't quite get there, kind of came back down again. And um, so it's got clear support round about this level as 769. So you'd say that would be the kind of bottom for um, QKC. But I believe they've got some news coming out as well. If we look on CoinMarketCal. Do I have I still got time? Yeah, I've got loads of time on the. I thought I was running out of time on the camera there. The camera's only got, well, it's got two hours charge worth, so cool. Uh, no, it's CoinMarketCal, not CoinMarketCap. Cal. CoinMarketCal, I'm sure they were um, coming out with um, some news, updated news, Quark Chain. Yeah, Smart Wallet coming out on the 31st of March, mainnet launch on the 30th of April. Um, Quirking Code 2.0, Token Testnet release as well, 31st of December. Um, so this um, is a good one actually for me. As far as, because I looked at, kind of looked at this bike then, when it came back down, I thought, oh, then I looked to the news, and I thought this is going to go up again. So I expect um, QKC to go up over the next few weeks or so. So that was a good one, that. Um, what are the details on the changeover for Pundi? You need to look at this, the site, the Pundi X site, um, or the Medium has got all the details there, James. So I don't know the details in full, how it's going to work with the changeover and stuff like that. It's a bit, it's not technical as such, but um, you, you better going over to the Medium site to check that out. Matthew Parks, Pundi X is great. Sell ladder, sell at 22, 1, 2, 2, 3, 3, then rebuy at 15. Nice gains. It's a bit like TRX and it has clear cycles. Yeah, it does seem to have cycles. If we could look at kind of Pundi X, if you look at this, because everybody gets excited about it, then it kind of goes down again. Then six months later, they get excited about it, then it goes down. So look at this, kind of hit there, kind of goes to the top. So it was in a kind of channel, in that channel between 20 and 27. And that might not sound much, but if it goes from 20 to 27, that's a 35% jump. So I have to remember that. Then kind of went right down to about 11. And then it's kind of trading in this channel between 11 and 20. Um, and again, going from 11 to 20, that's a jump of nearly 100%. So it doesn't sound like big numbers, but it does. It's got this kind of cycle. It's got this kind of wave um, just now. So it looks as if it might be coming back up into the next channel um, for Pundi X. Um, Matthew Parks doing much the same, but it's like watching paint. It is like watching paint dry. So I like trading on a daily or kind of watching on a daily basis, watching it going up and down. But with Pundi X, you could be in it for months and you just go, oh, it's a nightmare just trading this one. But so that's why it's good for the uh, if you're holding for the longer term, if you get into the bottom. Um, good morning, KNC chart, please, brother Anthony L. Falali. Okay, and see, we'll just have a look at that. It did go up um, a while ago. Kyber Network, we can see the big jump up there. And we'll do it from the crossover, so we'll do a retracement from the crossover. Retrace to just below um, the 61.8 level, or 0.618 level. And um, we could pull that down, just depends on where you kind of put that. So if you use that from the bottom, is bouncing off the 61.8 level. So it could bounce up from here as well. You could get um, a gain from here if it goes back up. Well, a good gain of maybe 70%. So it could bounce from here 
there's starting to bounce already from here, here but how high it's going to go up we just don't know what's the kind of previous levels of support it broke through it broke through a 0 0.38 level 7896 so we've not even got resistance so the next resistance would be around about the you know, 14,000 level Yeah, so it could have a good way to go up, but it's all dependent on how the markets go as well. Kukla is in. Good morning to you. Good to see you here. And Lawrence Matthews, good morning to you as well. Um, Dom Delanooch, don't know why people say Pondex is making money. Their sales of POS machines are tiny and a drop in the ocean compared with what they have invested. They're still making money though. And you have to realise that they're still making money off the sales of these um, point of sale machines. Obviously the phones as well. So that's why we say they're making money because they are making money. Obviously there's a lot of it invested but all, if you look at every single project, and I mean every single project, the money that they put in, i.e. if they've raised 25 million on an ICO, the money they put in, they've probably got about, I don't know, 5 million left or something. So they've really invested 20 million dollars and they've not got a product, they've not got anything to show for it, and they're not making money. Pundix is one of those, but it's making money. And that's why we're saying it's making money. Mark McGregor, been stuck in FET trade for more than a week, got in at 0.40, what are the chances of it rising back up? Yeesh. Um FET, it will have its day again, I would imagine. Um, we'll look... So 21.7 cents, this is the kind of dollar value, 21.7 cents seems to be the support um, for that. So it looks like it's going to go up for here, so this is going to be a longer term hold. If it broke down here, I'll put a stop loss in here and just get out at 21 cents or something. Um, not financial advice, do your own research and all that stuff. But yeah, I'll definitely put a stop loss at 21 cents. Or you're better doing a BTC value, I don't even know why we're looking at this because obviously it just depends on the Bitcoin price, there's no point in doing that. So we're going to look at the BTC value. So Satoshi wise, um, 5,590 is a support there. So I would put your stop loss around about 5,300. I'll definitely put a stop loss here and just look at getting out of it. But if it goes up, good, all well and good. Um, but it's rising from here as well, so it could go back up again. I guess not, don't know, it's just gone out of favour just now, obviously. It's just like, it's almost like a kind of pump and dump when it first came out. Um, and that's why I should never really get in. I know that it's easy saying that now, but you shouldn't get in um, on a coin that's just been listed, especially when it's kind of near its all-time high, or near its high. So yeah, I'll put a stop loss in and look to exit that when you can and possibly exit when it, when it makes money unless it shoots past it, unless some news comes out or something. Uh, Max X in the US, wouldn't you have to be an accredited investor to participate in an IEO? Uh, I don't believe so. I don't know if it was... Um, oh, you would be in the US. So I don't know if it wasn't available in the US anyway. I don't think the IEO. What's your thought on the new exchange, BitMax and BTMX token? I did look at it. We were talking about this in the premium group the other day, and it looked a good one, and then I seen that it had the same setup as CoinX, and CoinX, um, as I said, I mentioned earlier, we were talking about that, had the exact same setup as CoinX. So it just raised a wee red flag for me, but um, BitMax does um, look good as well. So I'll just keep an eye on it. I'm not going to invest it this time. Kick is in the house. Good morning to you. And Rocco Guerra, KMD listed Equisix. Um, I didn't hear that. Mark McGregor, cheers mate, a long hold then. Yeah, it looks like a long hold mate. Uh, Rob UK with Pundex from March, if you stake you will get free FX tokens. Yeah, so they've just changed the kind of, the kind of way they do things a couple of times. Uh, it's frustrating for Pundex holders, um, but I'm sure it'll come good. It'll come good in the long run. Matthew Parks, Rob UK, yes, but then your tokens are locked for a year, exactly. Right, I think that's it for now. KMD going up with news. We'll just have a look at the 
mark this again, KMD BTC. This is on a daily. They've already kind of jumped big time, but came back down. Now they're, they're going back up again. Right, so we'll just have a look on Binance, see what's going on. Oh, Storm has jumped up. 95 Satoshi. Just looking at the weather outside, it seems to be blowing a gale outside and we're getting snow again as well. So if it passes 100, it looks like it's going to go further up for Storm. XVG going back up again. So I don't know what the news is. Does anybody know what the news is with XVG, why it's kind of jumped up? Um, but it does look, it's crossed over on a daily. So this looks, it would be a call for me, but I don't know because it's jumped up 13%. But it's going past its previous resistance. XVG could be a good one actually. I couldn't find any news this morning. See that jump? With the crossover, it looked good at 168. But because it's gone up past this previous resistance of 184, it's kind of broken that. It's looking to reach 206. If it goes past that, I don't see any news. One second, this is going to bug me. Right, prices update, blah blah blah, Verge moves fast. Verge IRS wallet. Verge NetSense signs MOU with Apple Pay and Android Pay Partners MSP. That was a couple of weeks ago. That's not that. It's gone fast again, but to, no one lucky put blah blah blah. There's a lot of crap on Twitter as well. Input stack, nope. XVG update. No, I can't see anything with XVG. So I'll go to Verge Currency. That's Feb 21. 20 hours ago tonight. A few by Verge, but Esports Upstate Racing League will be live tonight. Okay, no, nothing to do with that. And that's on the 11th of March. So I can't see anything that's driving the price for Verge. But it does look good from a technical point of view, from a TA point of view. And it's coming off, coming off close to its all-time low at 146. Not all-time low, but low. Um, probably it's yearly low. When did it jump up? 17th of December 2017. So a year and a half or something. Yeah, so I wonder what's driving that. I don't know if anybody knows. Digitex pumping right now. Uh, where did that go? DGTX. Yeah, 2191. I don't know if that's the right 15th. We'll just go to the hourly, see if it's an updated price. 9 o'clock. Yeah, it's gone back down to 191. XVG on the way up, as you say, bought it at 185. Mark Pollen, the reason I bought some. Tom's Vibe, March 15th, announced MF, MUFG Bank Limited, a core commercial banking group, subsidiary of Mitsubishi Financial Group, announces Wabi as one of eight finalists of its startup program. Excellent. Storm, what do you think? Uh, not if it's kind of mooning just now, I wouldn't get in, in on it. Um, Peter G is in the house. Hey, Stephen viewers. Okay, Peter, you're just <laughs> catching the end of the live. So that's it for today. That's it for this weekend as well. I'll not be doing any over the weekend. And we're still busy packing. Just now, I don't know if you can see this actually. So we've got loads of boxes. I kind of in there as well. Um, this is just in the office alone. We've got loads of boxes kind of all over the house. Uh, getting ready for packing up and moving so we are moving we've got everything in place and be moving to our beloved 
um, kind of West End. So can't wait for that. So we'll be moving two weeks today. So we're packing everything up. We're still doing all the paperwork, phoning everybody up. That's what I'm doing during the day as well and still trying to run <laughs> the kind of business as well. But it's good. It's exciting. So really can't wait. Okay, I'm going to leave you there just now. Have a brilliant day. Have a brilliant weekend, whatever you're doing. And until next time, namaste. And remember, do me a favour and sign up for the Bitstack Exchange. It might be worth absolutely hee-haw, nothing at all, but it could be worth a fortune, a small fortune in the future as well. And you get free crypto for signing up and for logging in daily as well. You get free crypto and for doing the KYC process as well. So you get a few thousand at least um, and you've still got a couple of weeks to do that with. So use the link below and sign up for the Bitstack Exchange. That would be fantastic. Okay. Thank you very much. Until next time, namaste. Take care. Bye now.